We're taking a look at worksheet number six, specifically two questions on that worksheet, number four and number six. Uh, number four says two identical charges, identical charges are separated by a distance of one meter. A repulsive force of 3.6 newtons acts on or acts between the charges. It acts on both charges, right? 3.6 newtons on the one charge, 3.6 newtons equal and opposite on the other charge. What's the magnitude of each of the charges? A little bit of a different one here, right? My distance here is 1.00 meters. My repulsive force is 3.60 newtons. I'm looking for the value of Q1, and I'm looking for the value of Q2. If those are both the same, though, and it does say they're identical, right? If those are both the same, then why don't we just, why don't we just solve for Q? They're both Q. Instead of calling them Q1 and Q2, let's call them both Q. Does that make sense? All right, so the equation that I'm going to use, of course, is Coulomb's law. F is equal to K Q1 Q2 over R squared. And then we're going to solve for, wait a second, what do I do here? What am I solving for, Q1 or Q2? Well, both. Let's, let's replace Q1 and Q2 with Q. K times Q times Q over R squared, right? Since they're both the same, I call them the same thing. What's Q times Q? Q squared. Some people like to say Q times two, Q is 2Q. That's not Q times Q. That's Q plus Q, right? Q times Q is Q squared. So this equation becomes F is equal to KQ squared over R squared, and then I've got to solve for Q. So take the R squared up by multiplying. Take the k down by dividing, and then I'm going to square root everything on both sides to solve for q. So it becomes uh, f times r squared over k, square root it, equals q. Now, my calculator isn't working on the board here today, so you're going to have to just trust that uh, you can do, we're going to have to trust that you can do the order of operations here. Um, what I would say is calculate what's inside the square root sign first. This number times this number squared divided by k. Press equals or enter on your calculator and then square root everything. I will caution you though, um, when you're subbing that number to the bottom, um, lots of you guys like to write the number or type in the number like this. 8.99 times 10 and then that little caret button or that hat button, 9. You should not enter scientific notation like this. You should not put an exponent in like this. When it's on the top, you get away with it. But when it's on the bottom like this, your calculator will assume the 10 to the 9 goes up top. Okay? It assumes that you're multiplying everything by 10 to the 9. Okay? Here's how you should enter it. Here's how you should enter it. 8.99. And then second function... There's an EE -E button that is second, second function comma, I think it is. Is that right? Second function comma on your calculator? Okay. So second function comma or EE -E 9. And that way, your calculator attaches the 10 to the 9 to the 8.99. That way, you're not multiplying the whole thing by 10 to the 9. You're multiplying just the bottom by 10 to the 9. You should always enter scientific notation like that, but especially when the scientific notation is on the bottom of an equation. Okay, then you square root it, of course. And when you do, for number 4, you should end up getting 2.00 times 10 to the 5, times 10 to the negative 5 coulombs. If you ever get a number, I said 10 to the 5. Um, that wasn't right. I, I corrected myself pretty quickly. But if you ever do get a number that's 2.00 times 10 to the positive 5, um, there's a very good chance you're wrong. How come? Because what? Yeah, coulombs are big to begin with. And if you have 10 to the positive 5, like that's a ridiculous amount of charge. It would be unlikely that you would get an answer that's that big. Okay, it's possible, but unlikely. It's worth checking, at least, if you do get a number that's that big. Okay, number 6. So let's calculate the initial acceleration uh, of a, an alpha particle. Uh, if the alpha particle is this far away from an electron, the alpha particle is free to move. What's the magnitude of the acceleration of the electron 
if it's free to move here. Uh, first thing we need to do is what? May the force be with you. Okay, the force needs to be with you. So let's calculate that. It's 8.99 times 10 to the 9, or EE9, right, times 3.2 times 10 to the minus 19, times the electron is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 on our data sheet, divided up by R. And we can't forget to square that. I, I would do that inside brackets on the bottom, okay, just to avoid any possibility of an error there. Gives me a force of 1.1507 times 10 to the 22 newtons. Which uh, particle is that on, that force? Is that on the alpha particle or is that on the electron? What is it? It's on both, yeah. It's equal and opposite, right? So if you want to find, if you want to find the acceleration of the alpha particle, we take the force on the alpha particle divided by its mass. The mass of the alpha particles on your data sheet on the right hand side and we get uh, 1.73 times 10 to the 48. It's a pretty big acceleration. But when we go to find the acceleration of the electron, we would expect a bigger number. Even though the force is the same, we would expect, expect a bigger acceleration because the mass is less. So 1.15 again. divided by the mass of the electron, which is also on your data sheet, gives me an acceleration of 1.26 times 10 to the 52. So sure enough, sure enough, it's almost 10,000, uh, almost 10,000 times bigger. It is more than 10,000 times bigger than the, than the acceleration of the electron, okay? Because the mass is more than 10,000 times bigger.